We're here uh, live at MAFA Canada, Ontario. Just finished a seminar with uh, Ricardo Laboria. Uh, first of all, you went over a lot of Dela Hiva today, uh, yeah. which is, uh, is an endless position. But what is some of your uh, personal favorites? Well, actually, Dela Hiva is one of my personal. I, when I started Jiu Jitsu, um, I started with De La Hiva. You know, De La Hiva used to train at Carlson. And he used to help Carlson teach classes there. So when I started, when we were young, we were all young there, and De La Hiva was one of the first teachers that I had. And, and I got De La Hiva guard, you know, pretty soon. And, and De La Hiva is even funny. I, I was very good friends with De La Hiva, and he hates me till today because I introduced him to his wife. You know, till today, he's really, he's really he's sour at me. I mean, he was seeing this right now. He got married to Marcia, who actually was a cousin of my ex-girlfriend. So we're, we're very good friends since the beginning. So I, I learned a lot from De La Hiva. So De La Hiva guard is actually one of my favorites, though. <laughs> Nice. And off the, uh, the De La Hiva, of course, is uh, the beer and bolo, which we discussed a bit off camera. But I would love for you to, to tell your theory about the fundamentals and basics uh, that you were saying. You can't just jump into a position if you don't even know closed guard. No, yeah. We're, we're, we're talking about basics. The fundamentals and, and, and your basic structure of a creation of your game is, is very essential. You can't jump you know, straight to Birin Bolo or De La Hiva guard or half guard if you don't really know how to work a close guard. So and, and structure wise, you know, it's not every time that you're going to be jumping close the guard, but in the most part of the time, it seems like it is a very, you know, very clear pattern that you go from close guard, from the half guard, from, from all the other guards that you can see it. So my big suggestion is not for everybody. You know that it, you capitalize in the time that you put into it and actually how talented you are. But as you, you got to take your time and actually not lose in position instead of actually throwing out there a lot of different positions. And, and the most part of the time, you're exposing yourself to get your guards passed or, or to lose position. So create the fundamentals and go stick with the basics is very, very important. I believe that everything has, has, has its time. And you've got to take your time to really, really get good in what is basic. And you can jump. Nowadays, you go to YouTube or you go to any other resource from the Internet and you find positions you're learning everywhere. You're always going to be learned and you should not stop learning. But you definitely have to create a, a, a pattern of, of in, your, in your structure. You know, you really have to learn things that are fundamental first before you jump in in something that you think is nice or pretty or, or is hot or is cool. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So learn first the fundamentals and start to actually listen to your coach. Usually that's what he's going to tell you, you know, especially if you're a white belt or blue belt. And, and get your game going because maybe you, you're mistaking really in, in very basic things and you're jumping in and doing some very, very important and cool other stuff right now. So stick with the fundamentals is very important. All right. And when you come to a, a seminar and you only have a – an hour, two hours, three hours. What is something that you try to leave everybody with? Um, you always leave with somebody. You know, you always, when you go to, to places, at least when I go to places, I, I try to pass a little of my personal experience as, as a competitor or as a coach. Or I, I backtrack a little bit in what they're be learning to try to amend and try to create an ad, if, you know, for the coach or for their own structures. That's what I call, in this case, Stefan. Stefan, what you guys been teaching? What you guys been doing? I talked to Danny, and he says, oh, from from Spider Guard, from De La Hiva, you know, things like that. So I started thinking today, actually early, you know, what I, should I teach from there? It's one thing leads to the other. But I think the personal experience, you know, and, 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 and the passion, I think the passion for the sport, the passion to teach is is very is very expressive. You know, you did you you can show tons of positions and if you really don't not just believe in them or you really don't you're just taking your time, you know, just to just to do the job, you're not going anywhere. People can feel that, you know. Feel people feed in passion, feed in in, in love for what you're doing. I'm, I'm fortunate to be passionate about what I do, and, and I and I love to teach. 
it's, it's like it is. If I had more time, I think I would be here, you know, the whole day. So obviously, uh, you're the face of American Top Team. Uh, you guys have been dominant for a long time in mixed martial arts. I, I don't agree with that. I don't. I don't believe that. This thing about face of American Top Team. No, and. Okay, I'm one of the founders of American Top Team. I'm one of the owners of American Top Team. I'm one of the decision makers, yes. But in the time to put a face on it, you know, to see that the logo of American Top Team is really faceless. And in the time to win fights, it's not just one person, man. It really is not. You know, even guys, you know, even other teams, like Greg, for example. Greg is, is a good friend of mine. And Greg is Greg Jackson Systems, but you got to go back and track and see who's teaching the striking part, you know, who's teaching the wrestling part, you know, a lot of things that you're, you're not a specialist on it, you know, you got to give credit just to these people, you know, guys like Cattell for me, is one of the best striking coaches that I've ever met in my life, you know, how take credit out of this guy, you know, how take credit out of, a, of a somebody like Kami Brzezini, who is our wrestling coach, or Marcos Amatis, when another coach, and all the other coaches, a boxing coach, Daya Davis, Howard Davis Jr., you just can't take the credit out of those guys. So the face, now I'm, I'm more than a solve, you know, the problem solver, you know, and there's one of those guys that get involved in, in a daily basis, but in the face of, of the victory, the face of being successful, it's, it's, it's not just me. It can be. It, it'll be a lie if it is, you know. That's, it's true. I, I, I hear you. Very well put and, and very humble uh, to give credit where credit's due. So um, about American Top Team, been super successful. Uh, how do you uh, continue having such great success in the future coming up? Well, it's, it comes down a lot in, in recruiting the right people and have the right instructors in place and create an environment that people feel comfortable and, 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 and wanted to learn. You know, like I said, the passion of, of teaching, people feed from that. You know, we have a huge team. What is what is demand a lot of different structure. It is not a it is not a five or six guy team. Yet you can have all the attention in the world and the camp is just tours and gears to the person specifically. We have tons of guys fighting in completely different levels. We definitely we prioritize a lot of UFC fighters, strike force fighters, guys we who's gonna be fighting, you know, important fights. But you can't forget that you have guys there, they're upcoming fighters, that they are giving their heart and soul, and you see that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You have sometimes professional fighters, they're being in a game for a long time, and they are not, let's put it this way, they are not hungry as a young guy that really wanted to learn, and he's doing everything that he can to make it. And this is for a coach, man, this is unbelievable. You know, you really feed out of this passion. You know, at the same time that they feel like, you know, if you're there for them or not. And with our, in our case, we have so many guys, I think that they feed out of the, their, their passion and they feed out of their knowledge for each other and, and, and from the coaches. But fundamentally, you, you need great training partners to develop, to push it. It's that thing about iron sharps iron, that's the pure reality man and like we were saying you get to a point that you're going to be learning even from watching fights you're going to be learning from youtube that you will be learning from that you're going to be trying to train and, and try to apply that you know so the coach is going to be a motivator you know he'll be the fighter of psychiatrist or whatever is supportive but you got to have the self-motivation you got to understand why you're doing this and and i think we structure American top team in a way that we always going to be developing, you know, high level fighters because of that. With the quality of coaches and the quality of environment that we have there. Uh, I was actually wondering some of the greatest advice that you have ever received. Well, the best advice I ever received was the Carlson Gracie, and and I think is as as corny as it can be right now is that, you know, losing a fight doesn't make you a loser. You really make you a loser is just when you quit. You know, and you're going to get beat up, man. You know, life you'll beat up. You know, you're going to lose a fight. You're going to lose a training. You're going to have a bad day. And that's it. Suck it up and go forward. You know, that's how I take this motto as, you know, as this is very important in my personal life. You know, I have some, you know, some family problems with my daughter being blind and all this whole entire structure that I, I live in my life. I think I, 
I got this strain, you know, with the words of Carlson, that you got to suck it up and you got to keep going, man. There's nothing you can do about that unless you're being a loser and quit. I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to be a loser. So, you know, if life's going to beat me, it's going to beat me. And for me, try to scrap and crawl and, and always trying to get up. That's what it's going to be. Amazing. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome.